The story begins with an optimistic scene, the end. There is a very shaky political relationship between the superpowers. A nuclear war can break out any day. Far away from all these political games, a wealthy American family is celebrating their child's birthday. A photographer asks Cooper, a cowboy and movie actor, to give his famous thumbs up, but Cooper refuses. His daughter wonders why he didn't show his thumb up. Cooper says that when he was in the army, they were taught to raise the finger to find out how far away a nuclear explosion was. And he adds that he really hopes there will not be a nuclear war. Suddenly, a bomb explodes in the city. Little girl raises her finger and realizes there is nowhere to run. Cooper freezes in fear, but manages to cover his daughter. Panic sets in, and everyone tries to get as far away from the nuclear explosion as possible. But new explosions occur. Large mushrooms appear. Some make it into the bunkers. Some don't. 219 years pass. A resident of Bunker 33 named Lucy helps the bunker survive. She has many useful skills, starting with repair skills, teacher, fencer, and average physical training. In her spare time, she likes to help her father, Hank, who is the overseer of the bunker. However, she was unable to arrange her personal life, which is why she requests a transfer to Bunker 32 to find her a groom, which happens every three years. The bunker council grants her request. After a while, Lucy puts on a new dress, and the family takes her to the bunker exit. Her brother Mother Norm hints that anyone could be her husband, maybe he will be a raider or a cannibal. Bunker 33 and 32 are connected by a single airlock. They are greeted by Lima, the overseer of Bunker 32. Lucy wonders who she is going to marry, and out of the crowd comes Monty. The wedding will be in the Bunker 33. Hank says the radiation levels will soon be habitable, but 200 years later, they have little idea what's happening on the surface. Norm takes the opportunity and decides to inspect Bunker 32 and finds a completely destroyed field. He doesn't understand how people survived back then. When he goes into the next room, he finds a body and signs of cannibalism. After the party, Lucy hears gunshots. She points the scanner at her husband and realizes he came from the surface. The first marital fight begins. The raider husband injures her, but Lucy still manages to emerge out victorious. She injects herself with a stimulant to heal herself and walks out into the hallway. In the armory, she upgrades a knife to a gun that shoots tranquilizers. Raiders send most of the residents to Kingdom Come, but Norm is still alive. Lucy covers for her brother, and they are attacked by her surviving husband. Her father attacks from behind and fulfills every father's dream by sending his son-in-law to his ancestors. The raiders captured several survivors. Their leader's name is Mold. Saver. She calls the bunker's inhabitants the product of one of the complicated twists of fate. She gives the overseer a choice, his men or his daughter. The overseer chooses his daughter. After, the raider knocks out Hank. Before leaving, Moldaver calls Lucy very much like her mother. Then they leave and blow up the passage to Bunker 32. Meanwhile, on the surface, Maximus is being beaten by soldiers, protectors. They are members of a faction called the Brotherhood of Steel, and it is their duty to defend the wasteland. Their future goal is to search all over the country for military equipment. Anyone who learns poorly gets hit with a stick, because the protectors are very important for the prosperity of the Brotherhood of Steel. Suddenly, a combat airship flies in the sky. The protectors run to see the Paladin Battle Squad. They wear T-60 armor. Yes, this is not a tank. Maximus doesn't understand why they've come. A little later, Maximus and his friend make their way into the hangar. He remembers the day he was saved by a soldier of the Brotherhood of Steel, a brave Paladin. Then several of the recruits are promoted, Maximus's friend among them, and he's pissed that they won't promote him. The next day, the girl wakes up with a torn leg. Someone had put a blade on her boot. Maximus becomes the prime suspect. He denies everything during the interrogation, but a paladin walks behind him and orders him to tell the truth. Maximus admits that he wished he could hurt her, but he didn't. He is willing to do anything for the Brotherhood, even give his life. The man likes his answer and calls Maximus the new squire. A little later, he goes back to his friend and asks who could have done it, but she has no idea. The initiation begins. Maximus is branded. A man announces that an inhabitant of the Enclave has escaped and has an item with extremely high potential. Each knight will search a part of the area. The identikit shows the required man and his partner dog. Maximus takes the sack of useful items and runs after his paladin. At night, in the wasteland, the honcho approaches the grave where the ghoul was buried. His name is Cooper. 200 years ago, he didn't want to give the thumbs up. The leader asks him to find a resident of the Enclave. Cooper accepts this task and kills the man. The scientists in the Enclave are doing all kinds of experiments. The escaped man's partner is called 404. Dr. Wilzig trained 404 since childhood and taught various commands. He once injected himself with a glowing chip, but all that research was illegal. When another scientist finds out what he was doing, he pushes Wilzig in a showdown, and 404 runs to his aid. They are then forced to flee. Alarms go off all over the Enclave, turrets rise from the ground, but none of the bullets hit the 
duo. Let's go to Bunker 33. The survivors decide to use the raiders as compost. Lucy suggests to forming search parties to find the overseer. The elders think it's too dangerous, but Norm and Chet are there to help her. Chet doesn't want Lucy to die, so he wants to go along with her. This forces Lucy to knock him out and leave the bunker alone. A ruined Los Angeles appears before her eyes. A little later, she finds broken military robots, and in the houses, people who were unlucky enough to get into the bunker. Late at night, Wilsig comes out to her with 404. He explains that it's very dangerous to start a fire after sunset. They could be attacked by mutants. The bunker residents here are an endangered species. Rules and laws don't work in this world, so she has to go back to her bunker, but Lucy doesn't want to go without her father. After finishing the conversation, Wilsig leaves. The next day, Paladin orders the vertebrate to land. He's bored and wants to hunt. They find the camp where their target was, but their deliberations are interrupted by a growl coming from the cave. The Paladin orders Maximus to see who is hiding there. They enter the cave and the Paladin is suddenly attacked by a radioactive Winnie the Pooh. The mutant bear breaks the Paladin's gun and the Paladin shamefully tries to escape. Maximus doesn't understand why the Paladin is acting this way, but he helps him anyway. With one shot to the head, he sends Winnie the Pooh to the Kingdom Come for honey. But the Paladin accuses Maximus of inaction, and says that he will be executed when they return. Maximus is sure that this man is not worthy of armor and is just waiting for him to die from his bite wounds. Afterwards, Maximus tries on his armor and runs off to find his target. He really likes the power the armor gives him. With just one kick, an entire building collapse. Around the corner, he notices a fight and orders the man least. Walking through the wasteland, Lucy finds a survivor and shares some water with him, but instead of taking a few sips, the man drinks the whole bottle. The man says there's a town over the hill called Philly, where people kill all the time. He even offers Lucy a place to stay, but she politely declines and leaves. As she approaches the town, she meets a lot of people. Cooper notices the bunker dweller. Lucy stops at a store that sells vault tech items. The saleswoman is surprised to see a living bunker inhabitant. When she hears the name of the person Lucy is looking for, she asks her to leave the store. As she leaves the store, she runs into Wilzig again. He tells her about the bunker where she grew up. Lucy doesn't understand how he knows all this, but their friendly conversation is interrupted by Cooper. He yells that there's a big bounty on this man's head, and to make sure he doesn't escape, he shoots him in the leg, and punishes anyone who dares to interfere. The dog tries to help, but Cooper hurts him. Lucy wants to run away, but seeing a vault tech bobblehead changes her mind. The tranquilizer fails to put Ghoul to sleep. He is immune. Their fight is interrupted by Maximus, who protects Lucy from a bullet. He asks her to save Wilzig while he deals with Ghoul. Cooper can't penetrate the armor, and Maximus takes advantage of that. But the armor is too heavy, so the leg gets stuck, and Maximus flies away like a SpaceX rocket. When things calm down, Cooper treats the dog with a stimulant, and Wilzig gets his new leg. The saleswoman also says that it was molded who asked her to bring Wilzig to her. It's about 21 miles to the delivery point. But Wilzig does not have the strength to walk because he drank poison. Moldaver doesn't need Wilzig himself, she needs what's hidden in his head. Yes, and Lucy has to do it. We the scene before the war began. Cooper works as an actor, and his wife Barbara also works on the set. In the evening, Lucy puts a tracker in Wilzig's head in case the head is stolen. Periodically, paladins should contact the command center. Maximus pretends to be a knight and says his squire is dead, but he doesn't need a new squire. He is missing a small part to fix his armor, so he goes back to town and fixes the part. Well, when he comes back, he sees that his armor is surrounded by raiders. A fight breaks out. After taking several blows, he arms himself with a wrench and a toilet seat. The stupid raiders push Maximus into the suit, which he takes advantage of. Maximus shows a trick and makes a jam out of the raider's head. After what they saw, the rest of the raiders runs away. A vertebrate flies through the sky in search of Paladin and delivers a new squire. Maximus hides in his armor so he won't be recognized. The new squire says that whoever finds the target first will conquer the entire wasteland. Later, Lucia makes it to the flooded city. She is attacked by a water monster, Gulper, and it takes Wilzig's head. Lucy is about to jump into the water, but Cooper catches her. She explains that she lost Wilzig's head. Cooper has an idea. Use Lucy as bait. A giant Gulper jumps to the surface and attacks Lucy. 404 bites the monster's paw, and it jumps back into the water. This confrontation breaks Cooper's medicine. He ties the girl up and leaves with her, leaving the dog behind. Lucy is extremely thirsty, but Cooper has no intention of sharing the water. On the way, they come across a Vault Boy banner, which Cooper shoots it, all because Cooper is a Vault Boy. Vault Tech used him to shoot commercials. Cooper was the one who came up with the idea of showing the thumb. Together with Lucy, they come to see another ghoul, Roger. He's Cooper's hunting buddy. Roger is slowly turning into a wild ghoul and asks 
for a vial of medicine. It prevents the ghouls not to go crazy. Cooper is one of the oldest ghouls in the world, and he manages to keep himself under control. And so that Roger doesn't suffer, he ends his suffering. Hours later, Lucy forgets the rules and drinks the radioactive water. Cooper starts coughing and the girl tries to escape, but the way is blocked by a huge hole from a nuclear explosion. Cooper catches her again. Lucy bites off a finger, and as punishment, Cooper takes one finger as well. He wants to trade Lucy for vials of a two-month supply. Lucy goes to the store, and that's when Cooper passes out. In the store, Lucy meets a robot, Mark IV. The robot gives her a new finger and then puts her to sleep, telling her that it is now ready to harvest her organs. The robot asks her not to flinch, otherwise it might hurt. Lucy breaks free and knocks the robot out. She orders all the ghouls to be released, but some of them have already gone wild. Monsters kill store owners. The other ghoul can no longer fight the wildling and attacks Lucy. She pulls the trigger, sending the old lady into retirement. Outside, Lucy gives Cooper some vials of medicine and leaves to find Wilzik's head. Cooper takes all the capsules and watches old movies of him. Maximus says that he met Ghoul, but let him go. Squire assumes that if they follow the radiation trail, they will find him. In Bunker 33, the residents want to teach the captured raiders science and moral principles. Norm doesn't see the point. They killed their friends, which means the raiders have to be killed too. The elder and the new overseer do not accept his offer. Their conversation is interrupted by a man. He says that the water chip is broken. There's enough water in the bunker for two months, not counting the captured raiders. Before leaving, Stephanie says she supports Norm. Norm. Raider says that when they got to Bunker 32, the residents were no longer innocent. Norm wants to find out what happened at Bunker 32, but access is denied. Norm suggests that Chet dig up the rubble and explore the bunker. Now Chet also knows about the destruction of the food supply, and it happened a long time ago. The last signal was detected two years ago. They realized that the Raiders didn't kill them. Norm logs onto the Overseer's computer. It turns out that Norm's mother opened the bunker door from the outside. The inhabitants tried to get into Bunker 31 and wrote that they knew what was inside side. Norm researches the archives and finds that only former residents of Bunker 31 have been made new overseers. This makes him suspect that Betty is from Bunker 31. She wants to separate the survivors and rebuild Bunker 32. That night, all the bodies are gone and the bunker looks normal. They found nothing. The partners arrive at the lake and are attacked by Gulper. Maximus asks the squire to run to the shore so he can aim his fire from there. The monster doesn't like that very much and catches the squire. But the fake paladin manages to save the squire, and with him, they find find Wilzig's head and a dog. In the evening, the squire asks to be branded. Maximus admits that he's not a real paladin, just an assistant, and the paladin Titus is dead. The squire does not recognize him and abruptly cuts the power to the armor. Maximus can't move, so he stands there until Lucy finds him in the morning. She falls ill with radiation sickness. Maximus offers to take his Radway, anti-radiation medicine. Lucy wonders if the Brotherhood still has T-60s and real weapons. She suggests using the tracker to find Wilzig's head. She wants to give the head to the Brotherhood in exchange for five paladins to find her father. Maximus accepts the offer. A little later, they stumble upon two survivors. Lucy sincerely believes that if everyone raises their hands, then no one will shoot at each other. But the raiders were too eager for loot. Maximus grabs Lucy's gun and gets rid of the raiders. Maximus is wounded, but he asks not to worry. Then they come to the town where 30,000 people lived after the war. Lucy doesn't understand why the bunker has always prepared them for the rebirth of humanity. Maximus tells her not to think about it. The city was also destroyed long ago, but Maximus managed to survive. The paladins saved him that day as well. Maximus is getting worse and worse by the minute. Lucy has to take a chance and goes to the Vault Tech Hospital. Maximus goes after her, but falls into a trap and is knocked out. When the two wake up, they realize they are in the bunker. Before the war, actor Cooper showed the world what the bunker would look like. Settlement 4 will be activated in peacetime, to see how people can change in a small space. Everyone will also be able to buy shelter in Bunker 4. It was in Bunker 4 that Maximus and Lucy found themselves. Their men have found the paladin's armor and will soon bring it to the bunker. When the duo is left alone, Lucy offers to have some fun, but Maximus refuses, because the paladins must control themselves. Well, I wouldn't say no. There are people in Bunker 4 who have come from the surface. Maximus thinks it's a cult, but their conversation is interrupted by a local overseer with the eye of a cyclops. He tells them not to go down to level 12. Looking closer, Lucy notices that the other inhabitants also have strange mutations. During a personal meeting, she asks the overseer what exactly is on level 12, but he asks her not to talk about it. Maximus wants to steal the power unit and use the armor, but a woman stops him. She wants to give him a Pip-Boy and invite him to her new apartment. There he finds some welcome gifts and a hot shower. Walking around, Lucy notices the flag of the new California Republic. There was a special ritual
ritual at night in the bunker. Their chief god is Moldaver, the same raider leader. Lucy asks Maximus to run away, but he doesn't want to leave his comfortable life. Then Lucy has to go down to level 12. It holds various mutants and leftovers from past experiments. This is where local scientists create human-mutant hybrids. The alarm goes off and Lucy is captured. They show her a record of the scientists, who started the development of the hybrids. The hybrids turned out to be less docile than they expected, which caused them to eat everyone. The creature in the video was the overseer's uncle. The former inhabitants rebelled against the scientists and took over the bunker. They ask what kind of experiment was going on in Bunker 33. But Lucy says there was no experiment. Maximus sees Lucy being led away and he goes to help her. Her punishment is to leave the bunker. She also gets food and supplies for two weeks. What Maximus didn't know was that Lucy was unharmed. He takes the nuclear unit and activates the armor, after which he starts to wreck the bunker, but Lucy asks him to stop. Once on the surface, Lucy convinces Maximus to bring back the nuclear unit so the bunker can live. Cooper comes to his senses. There are men standing in front of him who have declared themselves a new government. Cooper recalls his friend. He hints that vault Tech does not need peace talks, otherwise why they would they build and sell places in the bunker. Cooper still has a chance to find out what his wife really does at vault Tech. During dinner, Barbara tells him that their daughter can no longer bring the dog into the bunker because of the new rules. Cooper wants to understand who exactly writes the new rules and why no one is being told about them. An argument breaks out between them. Barbara says she worked long hours to get her family into special bunker, and from this main bunker, they will maintain and manage all the other bunkers. In the present, Cooper is brought to Solar. He is now the local president. Cooper asks who Moldaver is. Solar says she is very dangerous. After the conversation is over, Cooper destroys the bandits and asks where he got the picture. Cooper remembers seeing her before the war. She started her cult and invited everyone. Cooper didn't want to listen to her ramblings and was about to leave, but he was stopped by Moldaver. She told his wife's secrets. Her science company was bought by Barbara's division. They were developing cold nuclear fusion, but Vault Tech closed the business that could have prevented the war. Only Cooper could help bring back development. All he had to do was plant a bug on his wife. When he got home, he put a bug in the pit boy. In the morning, the heads of all the companies meet. Rumors of peace talks have slowed sales a bit. West Tech wonders what would happen if some of the people survives and hunts the bunker's inhabitants. Vault Tech doesn't see this as a problem, because they have the most important weapon on their side, time, just need to survive some time in bunker. Their conversation is being watched by the secret identity. In the wasteland, men in NKR armor collect scrap metal. That's where Cooper comes. They used to feud with each other, but today he needs information. He asks where Moldaver is now. The guy has to tell her where she's hiding, after which he tries to grab the rifle, forcing Cooper to shoot. The trader squire gets tired of the dog and locks it in a ref. A little later, a survivor walks out on him. He asks for his leg to be healed in exchange for the nuclear device he stole from Maximus. After drinking the serum, the leg miraculously regenerates, and before leaving, the man says that Squire no longer has to worry about radiation. During the night, all the imprisoned raiders in Bunker 33 are dead, and Betty turns on the dispatch to repopulate. Each resident is given a number for the bunker in which they will now live. Chet and his wife ended up in Bunker 32. Not everyone liked the reassignment, but they don't get a chance to argue. Norm hacks into the Overseer's computer and sends a message to the Overseer of Bunker 31. He asks if Betty's been exposed. Norm writes that the mission is not going as planned, and the Overseer asks to return to Bunker 31. He goes to the airlock, the door opens, and Norm enters the bunker. At this time, Cooper finds 404 and takes the dog with him. A short time later, Maximus and Lucy find the Squire. They offer to talk, but an arrow flies into the Squire's neck. He survives and realizes that they have turned him into a ghoul, ghoul or Deadpool, when suddenly vertebrates appear in the sky. The Squire hands over Vilsig's head and runs away. Maximus pulls out another head, kisses Lucy, and tells her to complete her mission. Meanwhile, the Brotherhood of Steel takes over the city of Philly and Maximus. The leader doesn't like the fact that Maximus betrayed the Brotherhood and sentences him to death, but his friend asks for another chance to find the relic. In private, the leader tells them that the artifact will help create a new Brotherhood, and no one will be able to oppose them. Lucy comes to an observatory where humans and ghouls live side by side. Her father is still alive. Lucy gives the head to Moldaver. The leader wants to tell the truth that Lucy and her family were not born in the bunker. The entire bunker consists of 31 large cryo capsules. There's a Vault Tech employee waiting here who knows how to operate them. It was Bath who suggested the idea of three combined bunkers. There are over 100 shelters scattered across America. Each corporation will get a portion of the bunkers where they can conduct experiments. The best bunker will become a new world. At this point, the walking brain tells Norm that each person has been specifically selected for the gene pool with the perfect 
Recruitment Department. It is the inhabitants of this bunker who will become the new inhabitants of the planet. Corporations proposed intentionally overpopulating the bunker. West Tech wants to create super soldiers using illegals. Robco realizes that there is a lot of money to be made at the end of the world. Barbara knows how to solve the problem. They need to drop bombs themselves. Cooper is amazed at what he hears, especially when other corporations agree with this decision. Lucy's father is a very lucky man. He's been alive for a very long time. His wife did not know that he lived at the beginning and end of the world. Lucy's mother once realized that people had appeared on the surface, and when she told her husband this, he replied that she had gone crazy, and asked her not to tell anyone about it. This forced the girl to run away, taking the children with her. After a while, she found this city of 30,000 people, but when her husband came for her, he took the children and destroyed the city. This is how vault Tech deals with its competitors. The capsule stores cold fusion with infinite power. Now they will build a new world. Father begs not to believe Moldaver. Lucy wants to know only one thing. What happened to her mother? It turns out that the ghoul who sits opposite them is her mother. Lucy asks her father to say the code. After thinking about his life, he activates the beginning of the synthesis. Norm wants to go back to his bunker, but the brain won't let him go. The other residents are not allowed to know the truth, but Norm can sleep in the capsule. The army of the Brotherhood of Steel takes up arms and attacks. NKR notices the Brotherhood army approaching. Defenses kick in. Pilots dodge missiles. A vertebrate is hit. Paladins return fire. The NKR soldiers try to fight back, but they have no chance against the Paladins. Maximus supports his comrades. A few minutes later, they sneak into the headquarters and destroy everyone in their path. But Cooper waits them. As a former military man who wore similar armor, he learned about a critical defect in the armor, which kills the paladin with a single shot. He turns off the lights and, thanks to his vision in the dark, takes care of everyone. Maximus finds Lucy. She says it was her father who destroyed the city he lived in. As they cuddle, the man puts on his armor and knocks Maximus out. Cooper shows up and offers to get another autograph. Ghoul wants to know where his family is. Hank smiles and runs off. No response. Many warriors died on this day, all because war never changes. When Maximus wakes up, everyone is gone and the fusion capsule has started to power up all the electronics around it. Before she dies, Moldaver asks Maximus to stop the Brotherhood from destroying the world. The series ends with a scene of Hank arriving in New Vegas. Thank you watching folks, hope you liked it. You can check another interesting recaps in the channel. Don't get left behind. Join me for best movie recaps. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Goodbye till the next recap.